Hey guys, welcome back to Reynolds Rides. I hope you're doing well. As you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, this video is all about the C7 Corvette you see behind me. So full disclosure guys, I'm not trying to snake you. It is my birthday and my wife did get me this C7 Corvette for my birthday. However, it's just for today. She rented this on Turo and we picked it up last night and we're having some fun with it today. So hope you're not triggered. Um, that's the truth. That's what's going on. With all of that said, this is gonna be an awesome video. This is my first experience with a C7. I've never ridden in one, I've never driven one, and uh, I'm going through this for the first time. So hopefully you guys enjoy it and it'll be fun. Be sure to stick around guys, because when we get back to the house, we're gonna pull the C4 out into the driveway with this C7, and we're gonna do some compare and contrast, which will be cool. So as you guys can tell, it's a really gray, dark, gloomy, dreary, foggy day here in Utah. So good thing we have this awesome yellow Corvette to brighten things up. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna do a quick walk around and tell you a little bit about this car. So this is a 2014 C7 Stingray and the color of the paint is Velocity Yellow and it has the LT1 engine, which is a 6.2 liter, 376 cubic inch V8. It has a six speed automatic transmission but you can switch it to manual mode and use the paddle shifters. And the current mileage is 38,039 miles, which is pretty low for this year. I'm not sure what trim level this car has, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's a 1LT or 2LT. But we're gonna go through the interior in a minute and you guys would probably know better than me, so you can let me know. I don't believe this car has the Z51 option. I believe if, if it did, the rotors would be drilled and slotted. And then also these vents right here would be functional. So I think those are kind of the initial telltale signs and this car doesn't have either of those. So here are some quick performance specs and numbers on this car. So it has 460 horsepower with 465 pound feet of torque. It weighs in at just about 3,300 pounds. It does have a 50-50 weight distribution between the front and the back. And so it's pretty balanced and it goes zero to 60 in just under four seconds, which is awesome. This car is fast, guys. It absolutely goes like hell. I may or may not know from experience. And in my opinion, this is definitely supercar status. So as most of you know, the Stingray name came back with the C7. It hadn't been on a Corvette since the C3 and the C3 run ended in 1982, so it's been a long time, and it's pretty cool that they brought it back. Another thing that's interesting about this particular car is that it is a one of 75 Hertz edition cars. I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe you guys can comment below and let me know, but that's pretty cool. Makes this car a little bit rare. Okay guys, so here's a look at the interior. As you can see, all black interior, has black leather, removable top. It has heated and cooled seats. It has Bose speakers. This car does have the heads up display, which is awesome. I believe it has the performance data recorder built into this rear view mirror. And it also has a pretty cool infotainment center. As you guys can see, this interior is really nice. Again, I'm not sure what trim level this is. So if you guys know, please let me know in the comments below. Here's a look at the gauge cluster when the car is on. Looks really good. And here's the infotainment. I believe this car has navigation and that screen is a touch screen as well. I've said this before in a previous video, but I'm gonna say it again. I absolutely love heads up displays. If you've never driven a car with one, you gotta try it. It is amazing. Makes you feel like you're flying a fighter jet. For real, go try it out. Here's a look at the Hertz badge here on the interior. That's pretty cool. Number 60 of 75. Let's take a look at the trunk. It's pretty roomy back here. Obviously enough room to fit the removable top and you could probably fit some golf clubs, groceries, luggage. Here's a quick look at the passenger side. You can tell that the gauges and the infotainment, everything pretty much is geared towards the driver. There's this little partition here and uh, everything is kind of angled to be easily accessible and readable to the driver. One thing I just noticed as I opened the hood is that this hood is super, super light. I mean, you could open and close this thing with just one finger. 
crazy. The hood on the C4 is pretty heavy. It looks like these hood vents are, are functional, which is really cool. Looks like they're feeding cold air into the intake. Looks like GM did a pretty good job with the power plant based on how it looks and how it drives. They did well, I like it. <laughs> So some of my overall thoughts on this car so far guys are that it's you know first and foremost just an amazing car it it's powerful it's fast it has a a mean stance and it has a big presence about it you know i'm not sure if that has more to do with the color but this car definitely has a presence about it one of the things i like most about this car is the rear end i really like the square sharp angles and I think my favorite part about the rear end is the exhaust tips this is probably the the focal point in my opinion these things are huge in person speaking of exhaust here are some clips of what that sounds like on this car <laughs> That about does it for the walk around and tour guys. Let's head back to the house and look at this car next to the C4. All right guys, we're back and we've got the cars in the driveway right next to each other. I apologize for the road noise. I live next to a busy road and I know you can hear it pretty good in the video so I apologize for that, but it is so fun and exciting to look at these cars together. So some things I've noticed with the C7 is that it has a lot of Corvette DNA. You know, when you're driving it, you know that you're driving a Corvette for many reasons and I'll go over a few of them, but it's just really, really cool to see the DNA and traits of older Corvettes in newer ones. I think the differences in these cars are pretty obvious, but let's talk a little bit about some of the similarities. So obviously we have the removable top. Both cars have that. Both cars have, you know, the traditional Corvette wedge shape where you have a long hood that slopes and then in the rear you have kind of a short deck and so they both you know have that that traditional shape the stance of each car is really really similar the dimensions are similar I don't know exact dimensions I'm sure they're different you know when it comes to exact dimensions but overall I mean they appear to be about the same length they appear to be about the same height so things like that they have in common one thing that i noticed is you have these elevated fenders on the c7 and, and also on the c4 and when you're driving both cars they're pretty prominent and noticeable and that's one way of knowing you know that you're driving a corvette that's one thing that stuck out to me that really just screamed hey this is a corvette they both have bose speaker systems they both have rear hatches they both have clamshell hoods the c7 has the heads up display which the c5 and the c6 had let's see if we can hop up on my porch here and get an elevated view i'm sure there's a lot that i'm missing feel free to drop some things in the comments below let me know what you guys think these two cars have in common but those are kind of the big items that i saw or noticed two beautiful cars okay guys so I went ahead and opened the hoods the hatches and the doors so let's see how these cars compare with those things open so as I said earlier in the video the hood on the c7 is crazy light you know as you saw I opened it and closed it with 
one finger and the hood on the C4 is really heavy. Same goes for the doors. Doors on the C7 are super light, easy to open. The C4, well, they're not hard to open, it's just they're, I can tell they're a little heavier. And the hatch on the C7 is a little heavier. I mean, look how big it is compared to the C4. So yeah, it is heavier, but still pretty light considering. So as you can see, there's tons of room in the rear of the C7, a lot more so than the C4. So that's interesting. Let's just look in the interior from driver's side. And then let's just go over here to the C7. So not crazy different. Obviously, the from the C5 up through the C7, there isn't the kind of big lip in the door sill. So you don't feel like you're getting in and out of a bathtub when you're getting in and out of the C7. Here's a look at the engine bays. So pretty different, you know, again, they both have clamshell hoods, but the C7 has fenders, whereas the C4 doesn't. Here's a head on look. Obviously the C4 hood is massive compared to the C7. So again, there's a lot of differences. The C7 is a completely redesigned car. And while it does look like a Corvette, it looks like a, a newer space age Corvette on steroids. Whereas the C4 is, is older, right? And you can tell just by looking at it, but it's still a beautiful car. So there you go guys, that's the comparison of the C7 with the C4. Lots of differences, but lots of similarities. I'm so happy to see the similarities. So as I've driven the C7, I can't help but think about the C8 and just how that's getting away from the traditional Corvette style and theme. So to me, the, the Corvette has always been a front engine, rear wheel drive sports car made in America. And obviously, you know, the C8 is still going to be made in America, but it's, it's now a mid-engine car. And I love the car. I think it's an awesome car as a car. But when I think of it as a Corvette, I'm just not quite sure how I feel about it yet. I'm sure that'll change as the, they come out and as I see some in person and maybe drive or ride in some. But I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. This was super, super fun. Huge shout out to my wife for spoiling me and always supporting me. I love you and I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, I hope you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.